Here we go. Okay, welcome back. Thursday of February. Today is February 1st, 2022. Remember to leave an empty space for the topic. Today we're going to start a new topic. So the first thing, as usual, is definitions. So let's define some words. The first word that we're going to define is slope. What is the slope? In Spanish, slope means pendiente, okay? Now, in here we have a formal definition that says the ratio of the vertical change to the horizontal change. But I wanna ask you, what do you think or what comes to your mind when you hear the word slope or in Spanish, pendiente? What comes to the top of your mind? And remember, we're not talking of having, es que tengo algo pendiente. No, it's not that type of thing. that is like something that is getting, it's because I don't know, I have the idea that it's something that is like having the weight in something else to be like in air, but I don't know how to say the idea. Well, you can say the idea of today in Spanish, just for today. So we can get what's your okay. idea. Okay, es algo get... que está como sujetado a algo para que se pueda mantener en el aire. Okay, okay, that's one type of definitions. Someone else? Elisa, what comes to the top of your mind when you hear the word slope or pendiente? Or and downwards. Going downwards, okay. Someone else? Miss, but eh, pendiente mi, no era así como una colina. <laughs> like Iker says, like una colina, like a hill. Okay, so very good. So basically, all of the definitions are okay. However, the one that I was looking was Iker's answer. Like something that's a hill, something that's inclined, okay? Like when they are saying, okay, let's go up that hill, subamos esa pendiente, okay, subamos esa cuesta, that's the word that I was looking for, so basically, that is actually a slope, like an inclination of a plane, okay, remember we're working in a plane, in a coordinate plane, so that's what I wanted, an inclination of a plane, now, we have four different types of slopes, as you can see, the ones that are moving, so they can be correctly graphed, okay? We have four different types of slopes before I go into this definition and into this uh, formula. First, I want you to understand this part of the slopes, okay? So, four types of slopes. Now, before I go to that, I'm gonna draw here a house. Okay, what do you think will happen to the rain, if it's raining, what will happen to the rain if it falls in this type of roof? The water drops going to fall down. down off the... The water is falling down, right? Okay. Now, what happens if I draw something like this? What would be the difference between the rain going into this roof and going to this roof? The water goes much faster in this one because it's like more steep, more, uh, the slope is bigger, okay, or higher. Now, what would happen if I have a house that is with a roof like this? What would happen to the rain in this? The water is going to be slowly to drop down. The water will slowly drop or it will not drop. It will stay there depending on the amount of rain, right? It will stay there. No, it's the walls, okay? That's the walls. So that's the slope. Uh, depending on the inclination of the slope, it will affect everything else. Now, the slope is something, as you can see, that is used in engineering and architecture in order to design buildings also to design roads, okay? 
Have you ever seen, have you ever noticed, for example, in the gas stations, uno, that the roads in the, in la pista, where, where you go and go for the gas, it's not completely straight. It's something like this. Have you ever noticed that it has a little inclination to the sides there in the gas stations? Yeah, okay, that is because that the rain cannot be like this, okay? It cannot be puddled up where the gas station, where the gasoline is. Just underneath the ground, there's gasoline, okay? So it cannot be there, it cannot stay there. So that's why it has a little inclination so it can go to the sides. So all of that that I'm explaining, those are the real uses of the slope in real life, okay? That's, that's the slope. Now, let's go back to this, okay? Before going to the definitions, okay? We have four different types of slopes. Now, there's another example that I will give you. Let's say that we're running. You're running. Have you ever gone to the Cimarron? You know where Cimarron is? No, Cimarron is a, a mountain. There is a mountain that is really close to Las Uvas. Okay, so it's a mountain, it's a little hill. Okay, so let's say that we're gonna start running up to the hill, up to the summit, okay, on the Cimarron. We are running, guys. How do you feel? How do you think you're gonna feel when you're going up? How does it feel when you're going up a hill when you're running? Like we're going to fall down. Like you're gonna fall down, okay. What else? You feel really tired. I'm really tired. And in order for you to get all the way to the hill, you need to be to make a little more effort, right? You need to put more effort until running so you can get all the way to the top of the hill. Okay, so it since you're adding effort when you're going up, we're gonna call that a positive slope. It is a slope that is inclined to the right toward the first quadrant, toward the positive numbers, okay? It is inclined to that side. Now, let's say that we got to the summit, we had a little brunch in there, and then we decide, okay, it's time to go down. And we start running down. How do you think you're gonna feel when you're coming down, running? Much faster. Much faster. Are you going to place the same amount of effort? No. 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 It will be with less effort. Less is minus, right? Therefore, it is going to be called the negative slope. Okay. And it is a line, a straight line inclined to the left towards the negative numbers. Okay. So let's say that we got to Las Uvas at the bottom, but we got the we left the car at the beginning of the boulevard. And it's a straight street. And we're still going to run there. So how do you feel when you're running in a flat surface? Do you feel tired? Do you think it's gonna be the same amount of effort? No. No, but no. It definitely you're... not be more effort than going up. Exactly, it would be less effort and it will be like more chill. So since it is without an effort, we're gonna say that that is zero slope. A complete flat horizontal line will be a zero slope. Now, the last question. So I can see that most of you have a wall behind you. So let's say that I'm gonna give you a challenge and I will tell you to run on that wall that you have right next to you or behind you. Are you able to run on that wall? Impossible. No, no it is impossible. Since it is impossible, we are gonna call that slope an undefined slope, okay? That's what we're gonna call it, an undefined slope. So remember, when we graph a horizontal line, it's like we have y equals to a number, no variable x, we just saw that. And when we have a vertical line, it's like when we have no variable y, so x equals to one. So those are the four types of slopes, okay? That we can have a positive, a negative, zero, and undefined because it is impossible to run on a wall, okay? Unless you're Spider-Man, which you're not. Okay, so impossible. That's why we're gonna call it undefined. Yes.
in down defined slope is no definition, right? Sorry? The undefined slope is no uh, function, right? Not finishing. Sorry, it's okay. not a function. Ah, no, it is not a function. You're right. That's not a function. This three, they are functions, but this, it is not a function. Very good, Alfred. Okay, so let's go back to the formulas. There are different ways where we can find the slope, okay, of a line. We are going to start with two easy formulas. The first one is the rise over the run. This is run. Okay, the rise over the run. Rise is on the y-axis and run is on the x-axis. Therefore, if we have y positive, it means it goes up. If we have our rise negative, then it means it goes down. Okay, you're gonna see when we get to the graphing part because we're gonna graph. If we have a run positive, we're going to the right towards the positives on the x-axis, right? And if it's negative, the run, we go to the left towards the negative on the x-axis. Okay, but we also can find the slope with two given points. If I give you two points, then you can be able to find the slope. How? Well, we're going to determine one point to be called x1, y1. Remember, always the order pairs are x, y. So we're going to call it x1, y1. And the other point, we're going to call it x2, y2. And it doesn't matter which one you pick. So let's say that Nino decides to call the first order pair x1, y1. But let's say that Carlos Mendez decided to call the first order pair x2, y2. Are we going to have the same answer? Yes, they will have the same answer, even though they chose different order pairs to be x1, y1 and x2, y2. Okay. Then the second, uh, the other form is to find the slope in an equation. Okay. And that is when the equation is written in the slope intercept form. Its slope intercept form is a linear equation of a non vertical line. Okay. This type of slope of this, I mean, this type of equations will only give you non vertical lines. So there won't be any line like this that you can find with a slope intercept form equation. It is written in the form of y equals mx plus b. Okay y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope, you see, like m is the slope, and b is the constant, and it will represent the y-intercept. In other words, it will represent a point that is touching the y-axis. Those green points that I'm placing in there, those are the points that are represented by b. Now remember, y-intercept is always written in the form of zero comma and the number, okay? So, so far so good? We've got this, okie dokie then. We're gonna find right now some slopes, we're gonna find the slopes with the formula, this one, okay? With this formula. We are going to use this one to graph when we use this equation, okay? So first, let's find our slopes using the formula. And I'm going to use examples from the book, okay? So let's say that we have a point that's going to be called, let me see, or they're given in the book, they're given names. It's going to be called V, the point V, and its location in the order pair is 8, comma, negative 1. And we got the point Q, which its location is zero comma negative seven. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do is to decide is point V or point Q, X1, Y1. At the end, it won't matter, okay? Because you're gonna get exactly the same answer. So just to keep an order, I will say that V is gonna be X1, Y1, and Q is gonna be X2, Y2. And what should I do now? I just need to substitute in my formula. So I'm going to copy my formula 
this one, I'm going to copy it. I'm going to substitute, okay? So I'm going to say this is equal to y2. So instead of y2, I'm using the one that I defined. In this case, negative 7. It will always be minus, okay, always minus, and now y1, and y1 is negative 1, so I'm placing the negative 1 in between a parenthesis, okay, negative 1, over x2, x2 is 0, minus, always the minus, and x1 is 8. Now I'm going to simplify and solve that. So negative times negative. Positive. 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 Negative seven plus one. Negative. Negative. Eight. Negative seven plus one. Eight. Negative seven plus Negative one. Eight. Negative seven plus one. Different signs. Positive, positive eight. No, different signs. I subtract and I get the sign of the greatest number. So negative, negative seven six. plus one. Negative six. Okay, remember different signs. I subtract and I get the sign of the greatest number. You need to remember that. Now zero. Minus eight. Zero minus eight. Eight. Zero minus eight. Eight. Negative eight. eight. Uh huh. Negative eight. Be careful with the signs. The sign might get you the wrong answer. Now, can I simplify negative six over negative eight? By two. By two, exactly. So I'm going to divide by two. But not only that, I can also multiply the signs because negative times negative, it is? Positive. Positive, positive. okay. So my answer is gonna be positive now. So six divided by two? Three. And eight divided by two? Four. Four. So the slope is three over four. That's how you find a slope with two given points. Question so far? Hay que graficar or no? Push. No, not yet. We haven't gotten to the part where we graph. We're still just finding slopes, okay? We're going to find the graph later on. So don't worry about that. Any other question? Any other questions? Okay, let's do one more. Okay, let's do one more. Let's say that we have now four comma three. That will be point A. And point B is going to be four comma negative three. Okay, so what are we gonna do? Same thing that we did before. Classify them as x1, y1, and x2, y2. I'm gonna move these little houses up here. Okay. So which one is going to be called x1, y1, and which one is going to be called x2, y2? Like I told you, it doesn't matter. I usually place the first point as x1, y1, because that's the first one. But it can also work if you place it as the second one. Okay, so it doesn't matter. It will still give us the same answers. You can try it at home, okay? So we're going to use our equation again. We're going to use the, our equation and we're going to substitute. 
Okay, we're gonna substitute on it. So let's start substituting. Instead of Y2, I'm using three. Always a minus, okay, minus. And instead of Y1, negative three. Over, instead of X2, four. Then always a minus. And instead of Y1, X1, sorry, another four. And we simplify. Now negative times negative, positive, right? Three plus yeah. three, six. six. Over four minus four, zero. zero. And can we simplify six divided by zero? Is six. Six, are you sure it's six? Let's play, look at my calculator. I have a calculator in here. And I wrote there six divided by zero. If I place, zero. if I click the equal sign, Elisa says it will give me zero. Someone else says it will give me six. But the real answer is, math error what does that mean it means that you cannot divide no se puede dividir entre cero you cannot divide by zero so when you have a zero in the denominator like in this case when your slope gives you any number it doesn't matter what number positive or negative over zero you are actually having an undefined slope because you cannot divide by zero. So you need to say undefined. Okay, so from the moment that you see a zero in the denominator, that is an undefined slope. Now, the other way around will be if you get zero divided by a number. If you get zero divided by a number, then that is equal to zero. Therefore, that's a zero slope. If we do it the other way around, if we did, zero over six, zero over six, that actually gives me zero. But six over zero, you just saw that it gave me a math error. Are we clear with this? Yes, completely sure? Okay, this is the first part of the topic. We will not be able to finish the topic today, okay? Because we'll still need to find and see the equation. Okay, so we're going to see that in our next class. Okay, this is just the first part. I will let you have two exercises. Okay, two more exercises that you need to solve using this formula. Okay, which ones are the exercises? I'm going to write, it, write them in red. I don't like to write in red, but I'm going to use them in red. So we're going to call it extra exercises. And you need to find the slopes of them, okay? So you're going to find the slope of, the first point is E and it is one comma negative two. And the second point is F and its location is four comma negative eight. This is the first exercise that you are gonna do. And the other exercise that you are going to be doing is let's call this point L. And this is negative three comma five and point M, which is, now let's not call it M because we don't want to get mistaken. Let's call it N. Point N is four comma five. Okay, those are your two exercises that you need to do. This is not for you to upload to Schoology, not yet, okay? Solve them, and in our next class, we're gonna see how much you got, okay? And we're gonna finish with the topic. Since we haven't finished the topic, 
we are not going to place the topic's name. Okay? Wait. Questions? And okay. we don't have we don't have to upload this. No, not yet. Okay. We will have practical we have extra exercise. This will be the first part of the topic, okay? 